Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a new game from Cosmos called Liberation of Reitberg. Or Reitberg. Or Reitberg. I don't know how you say it, but it's this. The Legend of Reitberg, Reitberg, Reitberg is a two to four player game, but I've played it solo as a two player game, just run two characters. And what you're doing in this game is you're trying to defend off Reitberg from all the baddies that are coming in. You're doing that by having your little character move around, extinguish the baddies, you're making some friends along the way, and you're trying to do all this before the angry dragon returns and burns down the town. Essentially what it is, it's a cooperative puzzle game. You're moving around trying to figure out the most efficient way to get rid of all these cards to complete the four tasks that you need to complete before the dragon shows up. That's enough talking about it. Let's go down the table. See how it plays. All right, so here's a game of Liberation of Reitberg, all set up for two players. To set up, you're going to give each player a character and the cards that go with them. So in this case, I am playing Cram, or Krom, which is the yellow dude right here. And... I'm also playing, I don't know what her name is, Chada, Kata, which is the green archer right there. And then Cram also gets that extra axe because he's awesome and wields an axe. Then, based on the number of players, you're going to flip some of these narrator cards that are going to look something like this. And they're going to tell you to put some cards at locations. That's the face up symbol. That's the number of the location. That's a face down symbol. That's the number of location. I'm playing a hard game, which in this case means we also use the red colors on these cards. So you're going to set up twice the number of players for that. So I've already done that. You're going to put 10 face down narrator cards right here. You're going to put one task card out accordingly, and then you're ready to play. You're also going to have the friends. And each player starts over here in section six. We'll have the quivers and the willpower, and then we're ready to go. So on your turn, this game is pretty straightforward. On your turn, you're either going to play a card or you're going to pick up your cards and the narrator will tell some story and more big bad guys will come out. There are also some free actions, which I'll get into when they come up. But right now, I'm not going to do those. All right, so we're starting over here. We're both together. We have a monster here that's a six. The goal of this game is to flip these task cards to try to complete four of them. If we can complete four, we win. If the narrator deck warrant runs out and we have to pick up our hand again, we lose. So let's go ahead and get rolling. So Cram's gonna go first, or Crom. His name's probably Crom. That makes more sense. So he's gonna go ahead and fight this big bad. Let's go ahead and do it. So he's gonna play this six card. Six plus axe. I'm not gonna use my axe this time, so I don't wanna flip it because this is only a six. So I'm gonna kill this guy. He says, after a victorious battle, you receive one willpower point or one quiver. So I'm actually going to use willpower, and then your your bad guys will hang out under here in the trophy room because you may use them later. I'm going to use a willpower, and what that does, that means it can add one attack strength to me to a, a battle later on. So that's good for me. I can't use quivers a ton, so I'm not going to I'm not going to take it. All right, so then that was the end of my turn. Then it's Chata or Kata, and she's going to do her thing. So she has similar looking cards. Each card, if you look at it, it can be used in three different ways. So I have this action I can take, this action I can take, or this action I can take. Um, she needs to get some quivers, because quivers are how she gets bumped up pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to move one. I'm going to play this card. I'm going to move one. That's the little boot. So I'm going to move her over here. Uh, yes, there are more cards there, so I'll move her over here, and then I'm going to take a quiver. So when you take a quiver, you just pick it, and you flip it, and that's some extra strength that she has to fight with. And that was her turn. No special actions happening yet, because they, they just aren't. All right. So let's see here. Krom is there. He can fight that nine. Let's go ahead and do it. So he's going to fight it. So he'll play this card. He's got five attack strength plus an extra four, which will kill this. But because he used this, he has to flip this over. Then for two coins later, he can flip it back over, but it's always worth a plus one, which is kind of nice. So he's going to attack this guy. 
After a victorious battle, you receive one friend card. All right, so friend cards are these. What these are gonna do are gonna help you. Basically, they allow you to not pick up your cards as much. So this is a card that's gonna be in Krom's hand that he can play, even if he doesn't need to, just to not have to pick up his cards. So that's pretty nice. And in this case, it is this thing. It will do that ability down there. So that's pretty cool. All right. So then we're moving on to Chata. And it is her turn. She's got two cards. She needs to flip a card over and attack it. That's what she wants to do. So she'll play this card. She's going to play it for this ability. You can do them in either order. She's going to flip a card. So she'll flip this one so she can see what we're fighting with. All right. So that'll be a monster that gives us a coin, which is nice. And then she's going to take a quiver. So she'll take this quiver right here. Got an eight. Sweet. The breakdown of these is like three to nine or something like that. So yeah, there's some decent stuff in there. And that's her turn. She's not fighting anything. She's just storing up for a big battle. All right, so it's my turn. Let's see here. I want to move and flip some cards to... So let's do that. So I'm going to use my card to move and flip a card. So I'm going to move him over to here. And I'm going to flip this card right here so we can see what we have to kill. And that was his turn. So let me tell you what the free actions are. A free action will be an item. You can pick it up. Sometimes there are items that are up here you can pick up. You can trade items back and forth with people. You can turn over a face down task card. So say Crom went here for one of his free actions. He can flip this over, see what it is, what we have to accomplish. Or, and, or you can complete one of these cards. So if it's face up and we've met all the criteria, get to that location as a free action, you can complete the goal. So that was Crom's turn. Now it's back to Chata. And she is going to try to fight that guy, which I think she can. Yeah, she can fight that one easily. So she's going to fight with a quiver. So she'll fight him. So she'll fight with a quiver. She'll use her weak quiver, her seven. And then she also gets to take another quiver, which is pretty nice. So she'll take this nine. So she kills this. It's just worth one gold. So we now have one gold in our trophy room. And that was her turn. All right, back to Krom. Krom only has his friend. So he's going to play his friend. You may pay one gold, then Trieste will be fighting for you. So he's a five attack. Can't use willpower, so I can't actually use this guy. So I'm just going to play him, even though I can't use him, because he's only a five strength, can't use willpower. So he'd be a six with my sword, even. So he can't kill a nine. So that's going to be his turn. At least he doesn't flip a card. So then we're going on to Chata. She has to pick up her cards. So this is the other thing you can do on your turn. Play a card or pick them up. So she's picking up her cards. And then a narrator card will happen. So here's what happens with these. Cards are going to come out. There's some flavor text you can read if you want to. I'm not going to. But a card's going to come out based on these pictures here. So that picture right there means one card comes face down at location one. So we bring in a new card face down, location one. This one brings in a new card face down at location five. And then this card goes away. And then it's back to Krom. He has to do the same thing because all his cards are gone. So we're going to do another narrator card. So it's one face up. That's the face up symbol at location four. So one face up here. And then one face up at location one. Oh, big bad troll. All right, and that's that. All right, so basically that's how you're going to play the game. I didn't show you what a task card looked like. So let's just go ahead and knock these out and say they're not there. So we killed these guys. Krom's over here. As a free action, he's then going to take a turn to flip this over. These are going to have some abilities that they're going to let you do. Or that you, some, let me take that back. These are going to have things that you need to complete in order to get the check mark of this card. So in this case, you must already have completed three other tasks and at least one location must have no encounter cards. So in order to complete this one, I have to have other three other ones completed and there need to be one other location that doesn't have encounter cards, which are these. So this is a really difficult one to accomplish. And there's a whole pile of these. So there's six of them out there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like there's 16 of them total. So there's a lot of variety here. Uh, there's a pile of uh, narrator cards that aren't in the game. There are a whole pile of encounter cards, which range from, you know, little peons, which is a value of all face-up monsters, to like, a big bad 12, which you can't really see a big bad 12. 
So just a lot of stuff going on. So one other thing I didn't explain, if we were at the same location and we wanted to fight a big bad, so we were both over here and I didn't have enough strength or Chata didn't have enough strength, whoever is turn it is can play a card and the, anybody else with them at that location can also play a card to assist and use willpower tokens. So if Chata could only hit with five, I could discard one of my cards or whatever to help defeat this character. But whoever defeats the troll will get the bonus. So in this case, Chata, since it was her turn, she would get a friend card. And that's how you play the Liberation of Reitberg. Reitberg. Let's go to the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was the Liberation of Reitberg. Reitberg, Reitberg. Um, this is a really fun game. I played it as a solo, I think, three or four times, and I played it as a two-player and with actual another person one time. And I, so basically, I've only ever played it as a two-player experience. But I think it, it works pretty well like that. Um, you saw on the, the table, it has really nice art. The monsters are really neat. I mean, the art is just amazing. It feels like it's coming right out of Andor because it's from the Andor series. It feels just like all that. It's awesome. This game's medium difficulty so i would say you know maybe half the time you're going to win half the time you're going to lose depending on you know what tasks come out how efficiently you're making your movements um so it's not like a punishing co-op like robinson crusoe that slaps you around the whole time but this one just slaps you around a little bit so if you're okay with that then this is cool uh, i really like the mechanism of playing the cards and then once you have to pick your cards back up then the narrator is going to tell some story and you're getting one step closer to the dragon coming back. I think that's really cool. I like that you can work together to fight baddies, which I didn't really show you. I like that you can collect items that are essentially going to extend your hand for at least one time. You can earn gold by defeating monsters and that gold can be used for a whole bunch of other things. I like how all the characters are different that you can play. Um, I didn't show you, but there's one character that gets four cards instead of three. That's a special power. That's nice, because that means he can pick up his cards less than everybody else. He doesn't do much else, but that in itself is enough. So, I mean, we've talked about this a ton. I'm not a huge co-op gamer, but I like ones that I can play solo and still have a good time, and this one fits that niche. So I'm gonna give this a BGM accepted seal. I'm gonna give it a, let's say, seven and a half out of 10. So 3.75 wrenches on our scale, that means nothing. I'll stick, I'll hang on to this, or give it to my buddy Brandon, so it's still in my extended collection. and. Yeah, I, I like this one quite a bit. So that's the liberation of Reitberg, Reitberg, Reitberg. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming.